Welcome to another episode of Investing in IP with David. Today we have a very special guest with us. This gentleman has taken the popular game Paddle Ball and the popular game Spike Ball and combined them into a hit game Paddle Smash, which has been featured on Shark Tank. Please help me welcome Tim Swindle. Hi, David. How's it going, Tim? Good. You hear me? For having me. Yes. Oh for, oh, for sure. I know we were talking a little bit offline here, and uh, I, I'm looking forward to this interview just because it has some, it got some twists and turns that you typically don't don't see. Uh, especially, I would imagine, even from being on Shark Tank uh, and and being able to do deals with uh, Mark, and I, I think what Rob was the other other shark. Uh, but then mm-hmm. also to have to, to be a part of it, a, a, a company who someone else invented the product and then you guys were just able to work with them and partner with them and help, you know, essentially take things to the next level. Uh, I know you have a partner, Scott here, who isn't with us, uh, but going back to the beginning a little bit, can you maybe explain like your background before, I guess we get off into paddle smash. Sure. So I, I was a, uh, a software entrepreneur. I was working on building a, a software startup, uh, it was basically like a sales software and I was doing that for a couple of years with some guys that I went to school with. And as like a side hustle pra- passion project, I decided to um, create a board game, like a physical tabletop board game uh, akin to like Cards Against Humanity, if you're familiar with Cards Against Humanity. Um, and it was this kind of silly concept of uh, where you say funny phrases and silly accents. It's, it's, it's kind of like a drinking game. I'll just say it that way. <laughs> and um, much to my surprise, this passion project that I, I launched it on Kickstarter, uh, we had like a modest goal that we hit, but you know, it was our first kind of success and win. Um, and from there, it ended up getting picked up by Target and some mm-hmm. other bigger major retailers. And it just kind of took off. Uh, so you know, this was a very different business than I was building as the software company, which was venture backed, high burning cash company, running big teams, uh, very stressful. And then there was a bootstrapped company that I decided to do in my spare time. Um, that was more of like a lifestyle business, but it was very fun and uh, ended up also doing quite well. And so I was like, you know what? That's a lot more fun <laughs> to do. You know, something that I own basically all of, and I like just being in the game space. I like creating things that are bringing fun to the world. I think there's enough out there that's trying to suck the fun out of life these days. And so I was like, you know what, if I can have that be part of like my mission is to bring fun things to the world and, you know, hopefully make some money while I'm at it. Um, that's, that's what I want to do. So uh, I ended up building up that company. Um, had a few different uh, games that I launched under that brand and then ultimately sold it to a big private equity backed toy and game company called play monster. And um, from then on, uh, I also ended up selling the, excuse me, the software company to LinkedIn. And so that kind of freed me up and uh, said, you know, I, I I could choose my path at this point and I kind of want to stay with that 